So good evening, everyone. I'm really, really happy to be here today to be sharing, you know, my very, very first experience sharing about eBay to the WordPress audience. So before I start, can I have a show of hands? You know, who uses WordPress to sell on your web own web store? WordPress? Only just two? Really? Is this a WordPress meetup? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> did, did I did I get the wrong room? So. Oh, on WordPress, but not selling yet. All right. So who's on WordPress then? Yeah. Right. Okay. That's right. So how many are selling on e-commerce? Right. Uh, how many selling on Carousel? Right. Okay. A lot more hands here. So, so I'm I'm really glad to to hear. Um, you know, a lot of you are on WordPress, which is an excellent platform. You know, with that, you know, you can go either on your web own web store or go e-commerce, say marketplaces, very easily. Uh, and of course, I, I'm glad to hear that a lot of you are actually selling on, on Carousel as well. So maybe one last question before um, you know, we, we, we move on with the presentation. How many sell on um, local marketplace, say Lazada, Q10, Shopee? Right, three? Three? OK, OK. So thanks, thanks for your you know, participation, because today what I'm going to share with you is about eBay, right? And what eBay is, is a global marketplace, right? So uh, and what I'm going to touch about is insider tips on global e-commerce and how to win on eBay. So in a lot of our minds, while you know, we want to sell, we don't just want to sell, we want to win, right? It's not just about listing, it's about winning on the marketplace. So I've been in eBay for three and a half years. Um, I've worked with uh, lots of sellers like you guys. In fact, I have one you know, multi-million dollar seller over there. So, so Jeff actually works for Watchazon, right? Who uh, was actually in one of the videos um, just now. Um, their total turnover not sure whether you can, I can, I'm supposed to share it, but it's above 10 million in US dollars just on the eBay platform itself. So I'm really, really glad to have him today because I can use him as a real life example, right? Oh, so is that a clap for him? <laughs> right. So what I'm going to talk about is um, four main things the growth of global e commerce, opportunities for each and every one of you here in the room, the best practices on how to win. I think that's part, that part is what a lot of you are going to wait for. And how do you get started? So first part, right, you know, uh, global e-commerce, a lot of us know about it, you know, but this is the numbers, 2.29 trillion. That's the opportunity that we are talking about over here. While, you know, we are all here in Asia Pacific and we are seeing a lot of growth, 30% growth. In fact, it is the fastest growing region in the whole world right now. But most of the commerce activities, e-commerce activities, buying activities are still happening in the mature markets, the US, the Europe and Australia. So a lot of the sellers that I work with, they are like, I've sold on Lazada, I've sold on Q10, I've sold on Carousel. I actually make decent money, but I want to continue growing. How do I continuously grow double digits? The answer is if you don't go outside of Singapore, outside of Southeast Asia, it's very, very hard for you to continue to grow. Right? And of course, with the you know, entrance of um, Alibaba and the Chinese sellers, right now Alibaba has acquired Lazada, right? And now RedMart is actually, you know, together. That means that if China goods coming into Southeast Asia is going to be so easy. Our bread and butter is going to be affected. If we don't go out, it's very hard for us to continuously compete and grow. So global e-commerce, we are looking at 13.5% of Kager growth. But cross-border e-commerce is what we are going to need to look at, 29.3%. That's more than double the speed of growth of e-commerce alone, right? So, and that's why, of course, we, we work very closely with RMX to enable cross-border e-commerce. They are the experts in that. So what, what does this mean to each and every one of you, right? So um, a lot of you may be selling on your web store, or maybe not yet, but you may be thinking about it, you're on WordPress, right? So um, the, the thing about selling on a web store is that you need to have to do SEO, SEM, right? That costs you a fair bit of money. You need to con generally uh, continuously generate value for buyer stickiness, right? You need to think about why would a buyer come back to me again? And let's say if you want to sell to multiple countries, say, I don't know, US, uh, UK, maybe Malaysia and Singapore, each and every one of them may need a different marketing strategy. The way you do your meta tagging, the way you do your keywords and whatnot may be very different. And of course, that's where a marketplace comes in, right? All of us know that marketplaces bring you a ready pool of buyers. Uh, of course, you have tools and processes that they provide you with to sell, right? Um, and of course, in exchange for that, you pay an, some percentage in terms of transaction fees to the marketplace. What mo global marketplaces like eBay bring to you is more market size, more revenue potential, 
and I would say a mature set of tools and processes that we are talking about. So um, I'm not sure how many of you are you know, API developers. So um, you know, those in this business have always told me that if I integrate into Lazada, I have a hell of a headache, right? They change their API, API keys and details like on a monthly basis, right? Some of them even on a weekly basis. So eBay has been around for 24 years, right? For e-commerce, we are considered one of the dinosaurs, right? Because we are the pioneer of e-commerce. And what that means is that we've got a mature set of tools and processes that do not change with time. The, the next one I want to point you to is that you'll be asking me, right? You have told me about local and you told me about global, but tell me what it means to me. It's all about GMV and it's all about bias. This is a pictorial um, representation of what it's going to be like for you when you sell a global versus local. So, how many of you have bought or sold on eBay before? Oh, great, right? We have quite a number of hands here. So, this is eBay's first logo, right? We were founded 24 years ago, and that is the logo that we had. Um, a lot of us may be familiar with eBay being an auction or a bidding site, right? Um, a lot of us would think that eBay is still a used goods platform, and, you know, of course, a dinosaur, but I want all of you to take this out of your mind today because eBay is no longer that. 80% of the transactions that are happening on our platform right now are new items. 89% of them are fixed price. So what this means to you, each and every one of you, as potential sellers, is that you know what is your margins when you actually want to sell a product. You do not need to anticipate it or do it in an auction way. From Singapore, we... 39% of our sellers actually sell to more than four continents. That's how global we are. On, an, on average, they sell to 18 countries, right? So I have sellers who sell to Mongolia, to Lithuania, to Malta, like places that they never thought they would sell before. Uh, that is the power of a global platform. In terms of uh, buyers-wise, um, we have 175 million active buyers, right? Um, today, we are at 179, so this is a bit outdated. We can reach more than 190 countries. And just on Q2 itself, we actually have already transacted 23.6 billion. So to bring us closer to, to home, right, for us to understand what sells from Singapore, um, we have got 600% growth since 2012, right? Uh, smartphones sell every five seconds. Watches, watches sells every four seconds. Um, electronic gadgets sell every 12 seconds. Sporting equipment sells every 30 seconds. Um, this one is uh, one of my personal favorites. Uh, a lot of us don't know that you know in Singapore we, we do have quite a fair bit of this. You know along Beach Road, there's actually lots of fishing tackle shops. A lot of them are actually sellers on eBay, and they, they make millions here on eBay itself. Uh, health and beauty, home furnishing. I won't talk much about this. Collectibles, industrial equipment. I'm going to spend some time to talk about this. So all of us know that Singapore, we are a uh, semiconductor precision engineering hub. So what happens is that every couple of years, they'll retire their equipment because they want to move to a next generation of wafer fab. So what happens is that all these kind of industrial equipments, they get sold, but where do they go? They, they get sold as scrap metal to some of our sellers. They spend time to actually identify the items and they sell onto eBay as valuable items, right? Their margins are insane, I would say. So what could be junk in this part of the world could be actually a gem in another part of the world. So I want you to actually you know, have this in mind. So some of you will be like, you know, why eBay, right? And this is the first time in many years I'm actually hearing about eBay. So eBay, other than giving you the global reach that we just talked about, we do not compete with sellers. So what that means is that, you know, today if you are selling very, very well, you will not lose your sales another day, right? A lot of us are familiar that in some marketplaces, there are retail businesses. When there's retail businesses, what will happen is that when you have sales, they will give a phone call, you know, hey, sourcing team, you know, item XX is selling very well. Can you source it at a cheaper price? So the next day, they may sell 5% cheaper than you and you lose all your sales. That's what's going to happen, right? If you have a marketplace that have a retail business. So that, uh, some of you or no, may be familiar with the analogy of house brands. So let's say if you're selling on fair price, right? And fair price today develop a house brand and they compete directly with you. That's a good analogy as well. 
Another thing is that trust and security. So we are doing business in a global marketplace. So what we're talking about is that the other person, the other buyer on the site, you do not know them. It's not like you're transacting on carousel, right? Whereby you can do a meetup, you know, at a certain MRT station, right? You pass the goods and then you take the money. When you're doing um, a global business, you want skill. And you want, when you want skill, you don't want uh, your business to be limited by time or your own time and energy. So in this case, when you're doing a global uh, business, you need to know who your buyers are. And through a marketplace, say eBay, uh, we help you understand who your buyers are and we understand it and we take on the risk should anything bad happen. We give you the flexibility of fulfillment, right? So let's say today you decide that you want to ship out from your own home or your own office, that's fine. You do not need to put it in a warehouse in eBay. We do not operate any warehouse, which is why I think Aramax likes us because we can work together with them to enable your business. So you can decide to whether you want to ship from Singapore, from Malaysia, from Hong Kong, from China, or even store it in your friend's house in the U US or UK. That's up to you. We give you selling tools. Um, you can list via your own mobile. You can do it via your laptop. You can do it via uh, API or, or you know, CSV files, or even third-party tools, which we're going to talk a bit about later, uh, which is uh, integrated to um, WordPress. Cash flow. Cash flow is very important to all of us. Um, in some of the local marketplaces, all of us know that the settlement period can be two weeks, can be three weeks. For, on eBay, we work with PayPal to enable your business. So what happens is that when you sell an item, you receive the money straight away in your wallet. <coughs> Last but not least, we do actually provide sourcing and cross-border solutions. That's where we work very closely with Aramax to enable your business. I always like to share this quote, um, you know, to really exemplify what eBay is all about. If the right product is sold at the right time, you have people making purchases day and night from different continents. So in the day, you have people buying in Australia. In the afternoon, you have people buying in Europe. And at night when you're sleeping, kaching kaching, you still get your money in. People in the US are buying from you. <coughs> oh, right. Millionaires, right? So in Southeast Asia, we have more than 70 millionaires, of which Watches on International is one of them. Um, and more than 88, 86% of them actually sell to US, UK and Australia. So I always like to use this slide as well, so to just really showcase to you what it's like actually selling on a global platform. So Dan Tan is from JDBC Global, they are a mobile phone seller. Within six months, they managed to hit 50,000 a week, right? So now, you know, after we have learned all about th what global selling is all about, it's not that simple, but it's actually quite easy, right? You need to know your bias, step one, right? Whether you're selling on Carousel, Lazada, Q10, Amazon, or even eBay. You need to know who their buyers are and customize accordingly. It's not just about putting your listings up there. It's about knowing who they are and customize it accordingly. I would, split, I would say that our buyers are split into two types, treasure hunters and hobbyists. So it's important that when you actually work, you know, or even decide what to list and work your listings, have that in mind. So on eBay, we have uh, treasure hunters who are looking for the latest products at, you know, competitive prices. Watches is always a very, very good example that I like to use because I think most of the people today don't really go to city chain to buy watches anymore. They go online to buy because when city chain gives you 10%, you, you actually well know that you know, that's not the cheapest price you can go because on marketplaces, it's usually 30% of the re regular retail price. Um, great bargains at significant markdown to regular price. That's the example that I used just now, which is the industrial equipment. Uh, amazing alternatives to functionally equivalent products. This is another um, good one that, that I just want to emphasize. So you will see here, which is a, it's an iPhone, but those of you who are into iPhones, you know that red iPhone only came out after iPhone 7. This is the iPhone 6 and it's red. So what some of our sellers did is that they under understood that there was a market demand that was unmet, right? People who wanted red iPhones but could not afford iPhone 7. So we have sellers of refurbished or used phones. They went to spray paint it, right? And they sell it as used, refurbished, red. That actually uh, innately actually increases the selling price significantly than a usual used or refurbished phone. Hobbyists is another uh, profile of buyers that we always see. Um, they are looking for the most unique items. I use the fishing rods as an example. Um, they know what they are looking for and they are looking for limited edition or rare finds. 
So auto parts, eBay is the number one biggest uh, marketplace in the world for auto parts, right? So this is something that, you know, if any one of you in the room today are, you know, dealing in, I really recommend for you to think about starting. Right, so, you know, now that you have known your buyers, the next thing you need to know is how do you list it, right? And most sellers neglect the importance of listing. They just take photos the, in the easiest way they like, they, they title it in the easiest way they like, then they tell their friends, I have listed, but I did not get sales. And they do not know why, right? It's actually important to list it right, right? I emphasize right and not just list it. It's not just about listing, it's about listing it right. In fact, if today you tell me, you know, should I list 10 items, any or how, or list two good ones? I'd rather you list two good ones. I'm not, I'm not kidding on this. So this is best match optimization. A lot of you may not know it, but all of us know this. SEO, right? <coughs> SEO gets you to the top of Google searches. More impressions, more clicks, higher ranking. eBay best match is about, you know, maximum visibility on eBay search results, and then helps you get higher ranking. So on this page, it's how eBay's search looks like. 80% of our traffic goes to the search bar. So uh, some of you who are familiar with local marketplace selling is like the account managers will tell you to reduce your price, participate in EDMs, participate in promotions. If you don't do this, you don't get sales. But on eBay, most of the people do search results, um, you know, rather browse through their search results. So what that means is that in order to win in eBay, it's about winning search. It's just like how you win on Google. So today I'm going to share with you the secret sauce that a lot of our sellers, you know, have you know, used to win our search algorithm. First two things, category and catalog and title. <coughs> right, list in the right category. I can't emphasize more on this. Uh, in fact, uh, I will use the watchers example again. Um, what happened was that you know, some of the watch sellers, they list their watches as wrist watch parts. So what happened is that they did not get their sales, right? And they did not, of course, understand why, and they challenged me. I'm like, why don't you, we have a bet, why don't you, you change it? Then that year, when they changed it, they moved from 1 million to 3 million. That was 3x the, the revenue. But what happened was that eBay was not able to find the item, and eBay decided that the item was not price competitive. You can imagine the uh, average price of a wristwatch is probably $200 or $300, and the part probably is only $20 to $30. eBay immediately decided that the $20 to $30 um, dollars in, in that category, $200 to $300 is priced out of the market. It's not competitive. eBay decided not to show it on the search engine and put it way back in the search results page. So that is an example of how, why something as simple as this that could probably only take you 10 seconds of your time can impact tens of thousands of dollars for you. The second thing is that, you know, marketplaces give you characters, right? And for eBay's instance, eBay gives you 80, right? Different marketplaces give you a different number. We always recommend to maximize that as many as possible and think as a buyer, right? Uh, I see a lot of you taking photos. Um, later, you know, you can actually give us your contact information and then we will send the slides to you. Um, the third thing under relevance is that um, you need to do item specifics. So those of you familiar with, you know, in the earlier days of e-commerce, it's all about HTML description, right? But in today's context, what happened is that a lot of the marketplaces have been moving towards structured data. And structured data allows marketplaces to properly understand what you are selling without too much computing power. And that's what uh, eBay has done. eBay has done item specifics, and this is highly important. Um, I like to use this example, which is the UPC code. You know, again, something that can take you, you know, um, a couple of minutes of your time, you know, but can impact tens of thousands of dollars. So what happened is that in a lot of uh, consumer behavior today is that they'll take their phone and then they'll go to a, either a retail shop, you know, or uh, maybe a supermarket or whatnot, depending on what kind of products you sell, they will scan the barcode. And the barcode will tell them what item it is, right? So... If you did not have this field, even if you spend so much of your time to do the rest, your item will not appear. That's what, um, you know, how realistic it is. So, given that you have actually mastered relevancy, so relevancy t tells a um, search engine or marketplace that my listing is relevant to the buyer's search. 
So once you have done that, what eBay does is that we rank. So when we rank, we look at two things, pre-transaction and post-transaction. Pre-transaction is before you ship out an item. So if you are a new seller, you have not done any transactions, you can only look at this because you can't control anything over there, right? So under pre-transaction, there are four things you need to do. Free shipping, accept returns. So I think Aramax loves me now because all this means that there's more services for them. Um, the number three is uh, quality of images and number of images and competitive pricing. I won't touch, touch on competitive price because that's what you guys control. Um, under shipping, why do you provide free shipping, you may ask. So I had a seller, right? He, let's say he sells a particular item. He sells $10, $10 for an item and $2 for, free, for, free, for shipping. So he, again, was very stubborn, right? So I asked him, why don't you do that? Right. So what he did was he just converted the item into item price $12, shipping zero. What was the result? He saw a 17% increase in sales. So you'd be like, why? Really, tell me why. Two reasons. One, search engine. Search understands buyer. Search utilizes machine learning. Machine learning tells us that buyers prefer free shipping. So automatically, we will push free shipping up. Okay. Second reason. Bias filter. So there's on the left hand column, whether you're using a uh, you know, web version or you're using mobile, there's always top right hand corner, there's a hamburger bar, you can click on it. And then you can do a filter. You click free shipping, you don't appear anymore. Right? I can confidently say that more than 60% of our buyers are looking for free shipping today. The second thing is two or more photos. So all of us you know, spend a significant amount of time on our phones. They always like images. We don't really like to read anymore, right? We have moved from, I don't know, text, articles to infographics, you know, that's how our brains and our fingers have changed. So two or more photos gets you more sales. I think I don't need to elaborate uh, more on that, all right? Just imagine you have lots of different listings. One gives you 10 photos, one gives you one. I think quite clearly you, you know which one you're gonna end up buying, assuming that price is the same. The second thing is that accept returns, right? We are in an era where buyers are pampered. Everybody wants the option of return. And giving returns means that as a seller, I have confidence in my product. In fact, even if you accept returns, the likelihood of you know, people returning is probably still less than a, a percentage point or two, two percentage points. Okay. Now that you have actually you know, mastered the pre-transaction, I will just quickly run through you know, what you need to take note of after you have started to sell. Um, first thing is that you need to know history of listings, right? Because the more you sell, the more the search algorithm will actually rank you higher. So the first thing is that please, please ensure that your items are in stock. You can just imagine you have worked so hard, you have sold an item, but you need to refund the buyer. Then all your waste, uh, efforts are wasted. And what happens is that marketplaces have a way to punish you. Marketplaces either you know, charge you money, charge you a penalty, or have a penalty on your search results. And the next thing is that um, this is more um, applicable to kind of eBay only, but um, some marketplaces, they have a good deal cancel or a time kind of listing. So that's uh, something for you to note as well, because good deal cancel will preserve your, your selling history longer. <coughs> Last two points is uh, about shipping. So you, you need to ship as per promise handling time, and you need to use fully tracked shipping. So we have found that you know, buyers now want uh, items within a week, so it's actually very important for you to ship uh, fast, uh, and sales leave is up to uh, 11%. And using a uh, fully tracked service, you reduce your buyer disputes by up to 10%. So it actually saves you communication time as well. You can imagine that when you use a fully tracked service, you have got scans. Right? And all these scans tells your buyer where your item is. Versus if you use untracked, your buyer will keep asking, seller, where's my item? Have you shipped the item out? Has it reached my destination? You can imagine the number of communications, more communication you need, need to do by using an untracked service. So some of, you, some of you will be like, express is so expensive, right? I'd rather use postal or mail. But you have not factored in the hidden costs that will come downstream, right? So, uh, right. Okay. so some of you will be like, um, tell me about the various shipping options and what each and every one of you mean. 
Um, first of all, I apologize. I didn't put Air Max here, right? Um, I I'm going to explain it, right? So, um, so an explanation, right? I, I, I don't like to use Singapore because like, Singapore is so small, right? So I, I like to use um, Malaysia as an example. Uh, you can in international shaping terminology, we are talking about three legs: first mile, nine hall, or intercountry or last mile. So first mile wise, for instance, if you are a seller in Malacca, you ship it to KLIA. That's the first mile. You know, when your service provider ships it from KLIA to LAX, Los Angeles Airport, that's the intercountry. And then from Los Angeles to San Jose, that's the last mile. But what does it mean to you is over here. <coughs> and the number of scans, right? So in the traditional postal world, it would take you up to two to three weeks just for you to send the item to your buyer. Some of us actually buy on Lazada and then the item is shipped from China and all of us know that is you have to wait one to two weeks and that's it irks us, right? That's the traditional kind of um, you know e-commerce you know way of actually sending items. But what that also means to you is that the number of scans is only one to three, and reliability is the lowest. Yes, it may be the cheapest, but 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 your item can be lost, and when your item is lost, the liability is on you as a seller, not on the buyer. Buyer has not reached, has, uh, received the item. Marketplaces expect you to refund the buyer, because you use an untracked shipment. It is on you to ensure that item reaches the buyer. Compared to, let's say, if you use Express, like Aramax, the items can reach your buyers within two to three days. The number of tracking scans is more than 10. Right? So you can imagine, your buyer will receive a notification almost every, not even every day, sorry, every other hour. Right? They know that you know, the item is out from the seller, it reaches the sorting center, it has exited the country, it's on the plane, it arrived, it cleared customs, it's all now in your hand. Right? So that's why, of course, you pay a bit more, but you get the highest reliability. In fact, they will tell you that I'm confident enough to offer you an insurance on the product. Right? These players will never do that to you. Right? And one thing I need to touch on is the hybrid solution, which I believe um, Salim from Aramax will touch on as well, is the hybrid option. So with the rise of e-commerce, you know, service providers have also recognized that there's a gap between this and this. So increasingly, there's actually an interim solution that actually meets a middle point. You know, items do not need to reach in two to four days. They only need to reach in five days, but they give you a high reliability as well. So I will not steal the thunder away from RMX. They can touch on that later. So uh, another thing is that you'll be like, okay, you know, you're telling me Express is very, very useful, but I cannot be used to using Express for everything, right? So uh, this is a good rule of thumb, right? It's not a magic sauce. Um, you know, if you're selling what light and low value, I recommend that you use Postal. But if you sell, sell heavy um, or high value, you, you actually should think about warehousing it because um, even shipping rates is probably going to kill you. The sweet spot for each and every one of us today is actually over here, right? Something that's light, you know, but high value, something that's moderately heavy and high value, that's what we need, we need to do. If you are heavy, you are doing something very heavy and low value, the reason why it's NA is you really shouldn't be doing that product, right? Right, so actually that brings me close to the end of my session. Um, so, Four things that I want you guys to take away. Um, number one, understand bias, find your competitive advantage, learn the best, practicing pre uh, best practices. Again, list it right, not just list it. Um, digitize your products and find a scalable approach to listing. So scalable is very, very important. You do not want you know, to have a situation whereby you only list 10 items with one person and then to reach 20, you need to hire another person. That's not what you want to do. You need to be in a situation whereby today I list 10, right? Tomorrow I can list 20 without scaling up my headcounts because if you scale up your revenue and your resources in a parallel line, you're not really running a business. Last but not least is find a reliable shipping service provider like Aramex with full track and trace and fast delivery time. So we talked about scalable. So this is uh, WordPress.org and these are the plugins you know, available for eBay. So I personally have actually went in to check, um, check this and this. So these are actually um, quite good. It's a fully operating 
kind of uh, plugins. What um, you, of course you need to do is in your, in your own WordPress store, you already have a lot of these um, items or uh, information. Like with these plugins, you will be able to seamlessly push it onto eBay. Where did that question come from? Is it free? Yes, I, I'm sure all of them have a free or light version, but there might be certain like limitations of, of it. Yeah. Right? This? Yes. Okay, good question. Uh, I do not have details of this, uh, but we can look it up and then we can have a closer <laughs> chat later on. Right? Um, so to get started, um, really, um, we need. Um, I have Bing here with me today. Can Bing, can you wave your hand? Right, so she is uh, my business development specialist. Um, she specializes in working up with um, you know, interested merchants uh, on a sell global business plan. And then you know, she will work with you to register your account and then you can get ready your account verification documents and that is your IC, ACRA, or some proof of addresses. Right, and then next, you are ready to sell globally. So, so all of you were actually taking photos, right? So if you want slides, I just need you to leave your information on a URL. And all of you have your phones today, right? So you can actually just scan this. You'll bring you the URL. Just give us your information. We're going to send um, the deck to you. Do I have a, have a bit more time? OK. So I have some bags to give away. So I hope all of you are paying attention. I know after eating, you know, some of you may want to fall asleep, right? So I'm gonna, I have three questions and three gifts to give out. So, you know, fastest hand up first. So my first um, question is, how many countries can you sell to via eBay? Right? Over 150. Over 150. Okay, that, that's, that's wrong. Another one? Okay, right. Have a round of applause for the gentleman, please. Over 190 countries. <laughs> that, that's kind of factually correct, but you're underselling my, me, you know. I'm a bit sad now. But yeah. So, you're going to try again, right? So, the second thing is um, under eBay best match optimization, there are two R's for you to remember. What are the two R's? Relevance and ranking. Right. Relevance and ranking. <laughs> right, last question. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> okay, um, last question is There are two profile of buyers on eBay What are the two profile of buyers? Right, got it right There you go Right, everyone got this QR code? All scan? All good? All right <laughs> 